let us do a complete question based on all the activities so now in this question you are required to prepare cash flow statement we are given balance sheets as on 31st march 2010 as on 31st march 2011 now the balance sheet here has various assets like fixed assets long term investments and current assets plus it has fictitious asset in the form of preliminary expenses on the liability side we have share capital profit loss account loans this is long term loans and current liabilities in the form of sundry creditors and bills payable now taking everything into account we are required to prepare cash flow statement as per accounting standard 3 revised so now students let us start with it the first thing that is required is the difference of profit and loss account as on two given dates to this different difference we add appropriations but in this question there are no appropriations there is no reserve no taxation no proposed dividend so that means the difference of the profit and loss account would be net profit before tax and extraordinary items so in this case the difference of profit and loss account is 195 minus 1 lakh that will be written as net profit before tax and extraordinary items which is 95000 now students to this we adjust non operating non cash items non operating and non cash items now in this question non operating non cash items can be in the form of depreciation or return off or writing off of any intangibles the value of fixed assets is increasing so there is an assumption that depreciation has not been is not there but for preliminary expenses the value is going down from 18000 this value is now stands at 12 lakh 12000 only that means the value to the extent of 6000 has been written off during this year so it is a non operating expense we will add it back preliminary expenses written off that is 6000 besides this there are no other non operating non cash items in this question so we'll add it and we will get net operating profit before tax and changes in working capital before tax and changes in working capital and the total comes to 1 lakh 1000 now students to this amount we will effect changes based on the difference in the working capital during the two year period that is we'll have to adjust the changes in the value of current assets and current liabilities let's see how that will be done we have net operating profit before tax and changes in working capital as 1 lakh 1000 to this we'll effect changes in working capital now students working capital includes both current assets and current liabilities so we'll start from asset side first stock is a current asset its value has increased by 56000 over one year period now since the value of current asset is increasing it involves outflow of cash how come that means you have invested 56000 more in stock so actually the cash is going out so it is an outflow so what i'll do is add inflow or make two columns of add and less since the value of stock is increasing 
we will write it as increase in value of stock 56,000 then students coming to debtors the value of debtors has decreased by 38,000 in previous year they were 70 now they are 32 so there is a deduction in the value to the extent of 38,000 any decrease in current assets has to be added so we'll write decrease in debtors that is 38,000 then cash and bank remember they are current assets but in cash flow statement they are taken to be part of cash equivalents hence their values will not be adjusted in this part they will be treated separately as part of cash equivalents then preliminary expenses they are not part of current assets coming to the current liabilities so on liability side we have two current liabilities sundry creditors and bills payable the value of creditors has increased by 40,000 so current liability is increasing it will be added increase in creditors 40,000 then bills payable bills payable have decreased by 8,000 during one year period they have decreased by 8000 that means payment has been made to bills payable so decrease in current liabilities would be subtracted decrease in bills payable eight thousand I'm putting these figures in bracket just to make sure that they are to be subtracted from the total. We'll adjust all these items and the balance that we'll get it will be cash inflow from operating activities and I'll mark it as A, figure A. To this figure various investing activities and financing activities would be added later on so now students let us find the total the total comes to 40 1 lakh 41 thousand 171 1 lakh 79 thousand minus 64 thousand that is 1 lakh 15 thousand so we have cash inflow from operating activities as 1,15,000. So now continuing ahead, cash inflow from operating activities that we had calculated were 1,15,000. Coming to second activity that is investing activities. Now students, investing activities has fixed assets and long term investments as it includes only the long term assets. So we have fixed assets which have increased in value over a particular period and long term investments have already increased by 13,000 as shown by the figures on two different dates. So since both the long term assets are incre increasing we can say that there is an outflow. So I will divide this into two part inflow there is no item as inflow here but in case of outflow we have purchase of investments to the extent of 13,000 rupees and purchase of fixed assets to the extent of 2,74,000 minus 
17,000 which comes to 157,000. So the total outflow or the net outflow is 1,70,000. Remember this 1,70,000 represents cash outflow from investing activities and I have marked it as B here. Now once we have done both these activities that is operating and investing, now we will move on to financing activities. Coming to third activity that is financing activity. Remember financing activity involves activities which affect the capital employed in a business. So in this question, we will have share capital and mortgage loan which represents long term loan and the shareholders fund which will be taken care of in this heading. So now financing activities. Now students, the share capital has increased by 50,000 over the given accounting period. Since the share capital has increased by 50,000 that means shares to the extent of 50,000 have been issued. So it is an inflow, it is a positive flow because whenever we issue shares we get money. So we will write issue of shares fifty thousand. What I'll do is write it in the details column fifty thousand. Then we have mortgage loan. Mortgage loan has increased from fifty thousand to eighty thousand. That means we have raised fresh loan. Whenever we raise fresh loan that means we are receiving cash to the extent of thirty thousand. So mortgage loan which is 30,000 here. Students both of these they represent inflow. There is no outflow on account of financing activities as per the information given in this question. So outflow is nil. The total of these two is 80,000. I will mark this as figure C and this represents cash inflow from financing activities. So now students we have cash inflow and outflow from all the three activities. The first one being operating activities which we had marked as A which clearly showed that there was an inflow of 1,15,000. Then there was a cash outflow from investing activities to the extent of 1,70,000 and now we have cash inflow from financing activities marked as C here which shows that there is a positive flow or inflow of 80,000. Now totaling these figures or adjusting them with each other what we will get is total cash generated during the business during this particular accounting period by this particular business. Let us see how that will be done. Moving ahead we will now calculate net cash inflow or outflow during the year. Now students we have calculated cash inflows from all the three activities. So now net cash inflow or outflow during the year we have put outflow in the bracket because if the answer is negative it represents cash outflow. How will we will calculate this? We will calculate this by totaling the cash inflows from various activities. A here represents cash inflow from operating activities which in this case was 1,15,000. B represents cash outflow from investing activities. 
Now, since it is outflow that is why minus sign here which was 1 lakh 70,000 and C represents cash inflow from financing activities which was 80,000. So, now the total or the net inflow of this figure comes to rupees 25,000. That means, during this particular year this business has generated cash inflows to the extent of 25,000 rupees. Now, to this figure we will add cash equivalents in the beginning of the year. Add opening cash equivalents opening cash equivalents that means the value of cash equivalents in the beginning of the year. So, cash and bank represents cash equivalent here in the beginning of the year the sum total of their values is 70,000 that would be 20,000 plus 50,000 which is 70,000. Once we add these two figures we will get 95,000 as the answer and remember students this is the value that should be reflected by our closing cash equivalents. So, you can see here that the closing cash equivalents are 70 plus 25 which is 95. So, that makes it correct. Once you have added your net cash inflow to your opening cash equivalents, the answer should always be equal to your closing cash equivalents. So, the answer would be closing cash equivalents. which in this case are 25,000 for cash and 70,000 for bank.